Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Wednesday, November the 18th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense. The lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Our reading tonight is from Matthew 27, continuing the account of the crucifixion. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple, and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. Our evening devotion with Martin Luther is based on Genesis 21. 27 to 31. Abraham took some sheep and cattle and gave them to, to Abimelech, and the two of them made an agreement. That place is called Beersheba, because both of them swore an oath there. Handling Secular Matters Abraham made a binding agreement with King Abimelech. This in incident shouldn't be passed off as purely secular and superficial. Instead, we should carefully note what Abraham did here because it can bring us comfort. Some people think that Christians shouldn't get involved in public matters. 
But this story goes against that mistaken notion. God didn't establish the church to get rid of the family and government. He wants the church to support them. That's why Abraham, the father of the promise and king of all earthly kings, doesn't refuse to take an oath and enter into binding secular agreement with this king. No one should use Christianity as an excuse for not wanting to have a job or hold public office as certain religious people do. They're only trying to avoid serving others. But by avoiding this, they're ignoring God's command to love them and to love other people. In the end, they will receive what they deserve for their hypocritical behavior. We should carefully consider God's laws in Abraham's example. Abraham didn't concern himself only with religious matters. He was a prophet of God, but he also dealt with matters relating to the government and his own household. So we need rulers in the world as well as in the church. The church doesn't have the right to do away with the family structure or the government. Rather, the church should affirm and support these institutions. Join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord. To comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. O God, creator of heaven and earth, grant that as the crucified body of your dear Son was laid in the tomb and rested on this holy Sabbath, so we may await with him the coming of the third day and rise with him to the newness of life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our shorter reading with Luther today is based on Psalm 2, verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and glorify him with trembling. Praise God at all times. Since we neither acknowledged nor praised God as our benefactor in peace and prosperity, as we should have done, it has pleased him that now we should acknowledge and praise him through the cross in adversity. We did not serve God with gladness and security, and so he is pleased that we serve him with gladness and fear and rejoice with trembling. This is the cross of Christ and the foolishness of preaching by which he saves the believers. Those who follow opinion, reason, wisdom, and knowledge are offended by all this and perish. This, then, is the meaning. 
when Christ the Lord reigns with his iron scepter and crushes the old man through the word of the cross, according to the will and command of the Father, who has subjected everything to him, you must recognize yourself as subjected to him. However, you are subjected in fear, that you may bear his cross in patience and humility. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.